I'm not ashamed. What would happen to a woman who committed adultery when brought before the priests in Numbers 15? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Numbers on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Numbers chapter 5. We're going to be reading from verses 16 to 22. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. The priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the tabernacle and put it into the water. Then the priest shall stand the woman before the Lord, uncover the woman's head, and put the offering for remembering in her hands, which is the grain offering of jealousy. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse. And the priest shall put her under oath and say to the woman, If no man has lain with you, and if you have not gone astray to uncleanness while under your husband's authority, be free from this bitter water that brings a curse. But if you have gone astray while under your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself and some man other than your husband has lain with you, then the priest shall put the woman under the oath of the curse, and he shall say to the woman, The Lord make you a curse and an oath among your people. When the Lord makes your thigh rot and your belly swell, and may this water that causes the curse go into your stomach and make your belly swell and your thigh rot. Then the woman shall say, Amen, so be it. What we discussed in the last lesson is a ritual that looks rather strange and perhaps superstitious to our modern eyes. It is not repeated in the New Testament, so it is not our law today, nor is it repeated anywhere else in Scripture, and Jewish sources say that it wasn't even practiced before the time of Jesus. This was not a ritual that the Jews had to practice, like the law of the trespass offering or the law of the leper, but it was available to them should a husband suspect his wife of adultery, but did not have proof. Since this is not our law today, what can we learn from it? Well, for starters, we can know that adultery is serious. Today, adultery is still frowned upon by most societies, but the stigma associated with it is not like it was before. For instance, if someone is divorced for adultery, that usually doesn't prevent him or her from marrying again, though improperly in the eyes of God, because of their reputation. In Bible times, being accused of adultery could come with severe consequences, ones that one would want to be avoided. Therefore, to the innocent woman, this ritual here would not be a problem, even if her husband suspects her unjustly, for it would clear her name and allow her not to be viewed of as a whore by her town. When a husband suspected his wife of adultery without proof, he was to bring his wife to the priest, where God would, through this ritual, reveal the truth. The offering that was to be brought was barley meal, which was an offering less than the usual grain offering, for it was not an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord, but an offering for the determination of sin. No oil or frankincense was to be placed on it because of this. Starting now at verse 16, we find that the woman would then be brought near to the priest and set before the Lord. As we said earlier, the priest would not pronounce innocence or guilt on the woman. God would. The priest would take holy water, presumably from the laver, in an earthen vessel, and take some dust from the floor of the tabernacle, which would also be holy because it was from the tabernacle itself where God's presence was, and mix the dust in water. Thus, the mixture here would not be a poison that would harm the woman, though it would not be something we would want to drink. The woman's head would be uncovered. Why? Because the covering here was a sign of submission to her husband. The Bible teaches that the wife is to submit to her husband, and one of the symbols of that submission among the Jews was that a wife would wear something on her head to show this. However, if she was an adulteress, she was not in submission to her husband, hence why the covering was removed for this ritual. The grain offering of jealousy would be placed in her hands, while the bitter water that brings a curse would be in the priest's hands. The priest would then place the woman under oath in order for it to be determined whether or not she had committed adultery. The first part of the oath concerned if she was innocent, while the second part of the oath concerned if she was guilty. Her innocence or guilt will be discussed in the next lesson, but it basically will be determined by what happened when she drank the bitter water. 
As part of the oath, though, the curse that would prove her guilt would be that her thigh would rot and her belly would swell. Nobody knows what this disease was, but whatever it was, it was sent directly from the Lord, for the bitter water contained no properties that would cause this reaction. By the pronouncement of her innocence at the end of the chapter, it, is also, it also appears that this disease must have disrupted her ability to bear children. Remember, at that, at that time, it was seen as punishment by God if a woman could not bear children, even though that was not always the case. So if the woman was guilty, and this was her punishment, she would be shamed for her behavior. The woman was to say amen, amen, and to submit to this test. If she was innocent, nothing bad would happen. However, if she refused, she would be admitting her guilt, and her sin would have to be dealt with. Thus, if she was innocent and wanted her name cleared, she would want to go through with what the priest was doing. We'll conclude this rather peculiar ritual, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 5, verses 23 to 31. As we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.